Hi, one chemical that's on my list to experiment with is benzophenone and so I wanted to make it today. This is benzoic acid that I made from benzaldehyde, oxidized it in air because I figured that I can use permanganate for some better things. So I need to weigh how much I actually have because I don't really know. I have to recrystallize it, dry it, then I will, well actually, wait a second, okay this will work, then I will weigh it and then I will dissolve it once again. Oh, there's a bit of loss. Okay, 5 grams, that's not great really. Probably should have used permanganate, really. So, long story short, you neutralize this benzoic acid with calcium hydroxide. Oh, by the way, here's calcium hydroxide. Look, look at this packaging. Look at it. Anyway, where was I? You neutralize benzoic acid uh, with calcium uh, hydroxide to form calcium benzoate, and then you paralyze it to form calcium oxide and. What am, I, what am I making? Benzophenone, yeah. Now the question is, what is the best way to neutralize the benzoic acid with calcium hydroxide? Because calcium hydroxide is fairly insoluble and benzoic acid as well. So you can do this either by mixing very well or not sure. But I figure that probably the best way would be to dissolve benzoic acid in water and then add hydroxide dispersed in water slowly. Now the calcium benzoate is soluble in water so I'm not sure how that will work. I guess I guess we will see. Well I guess I will start with benzoic acid. We'll add about 100 ml of water. I will need about only about 1.2 grams of calcium hydroxide, so I will add like, I don't know, like 2, and like, I don't know, 15 ml of water to it. Then I will heat this up to about when you can see the water vapor. Okay, well, I thought I would have a little bit more visibility, but in theory all should dissolve in the water, so I guess I will... I will add hydroxide about now, Let's see what happens. Perhaps it wouldn't be so bad if I did a hot filtration and then, I don't know, crystallize this. Actually, let's try to precipitate this into acetone. Yeah. And this thing has settled. So this is clear solution. Okay. Well, it is very cloudy. But then again, this is a lot of liquid, so I would need like one liter of acetone to pull this off, which is mm, not really a great idea. But yeah, I would be able to filter this and it would dry very quickly. Mm. 
Hmm, very tough decisions, tough decisions. I just checked that this looks that it crystallizes in very very tiny specks. So I think what I will do is heat this back up. Maybe even to boiling, probably to boiling temperature. Then hot filter it and then crystallize. If that looks like unusable crap, then I will precipitate it to acetone. So how about that? Okay, I think we are getting there. Well, this didn't work at all. Hmm. But it's only about 100 milliliters now, so I think... I think I could probably precipitate this out, even though... Jesus... Well... Okay, here comes the acetone. Wait, what? Now this sucks. Actually, this cleared up quite nicely, so perhaps, perhaps this would be easier than I expected originally. We'll see. I think that bunch of stuff is coming over still and probably crystallizing or whatever. Now I think this is probably all that we will get, and as you can see this is very very nice powder. So, I should weigh it first, and then try to investigate if we have some product still in solution. You can see on the bottom of this flask there is, there is some solid material floating around. A very 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 tiny amount. I think I should have waited a little bit. Look at these nice crystals. Ah. Well, I'm pretty fine with a little bit of loss. Now for the next step we have to pyrolyze this and I have to make some something that that we can do it in. Basically some container because this will require quite high temperatures, probably up to 400 degrees. So this would be this would have to be probably quote unquote disposable container, especially if especially if I am going to do it under vacuum because it's probably best way to do it. Otherwise, we risk decomposing a bunch of product. So far, I have done some sniff testing with ultra tiny amounts in just glass tube. It's open. And this seems to work. Rather slowly, but it seems to work. But they will need, uh, I think, larger tube.
Okay, so here's the thing in all its glory. It has a little bit more joints than I would like, but we'll see if this big condenser is necessary because it looked to me that because it looked to me that product was a little bit smoky, so from my experience you need a long condenser to condense that stuff very efficiently. Okay, now we can at least check how much material are we going to add. I mean, roughly, but still. Oh! Okay, that's quite bad. So I guess let's start with pulling out whatever water is present still. I guess it's round number two. Maybe it was a mistake to start heating before pressure stabilized and this will take some time. Our target is 0.1 atmosphere I guess. 0.05 really, but that will take very long time. I mean, I did expect this to go relatively well. So I'm not sure. Perhaps I can revisit this with acetophenone that should work kinda sorta better. This, this really sucks. Uh, okay, so this is our product. 0 0.01 grams of tar. But on the positive note, it still has a relatively nice smell, so I think there is some benzophenone, but yeah. Well, anyway, see you next time.